Good morning, NDC Oslo. Hello, everybody. How are you? I am super excited to be with you virtually from my winter wonderland. Uh, it's not quite the same as being with all of you in person, but it's the best I can do. I hope you are having a fantastic conference already. I know it's day two and you've got a long day of awesome content ahead of you, uh, but I hope that you are here and ready to learn about live coding on Twitch and learning in public. So this is my usual setup. I stream on Twitch and this is where I stream from. It's a bit crazy uh, and I'm going to tell you all about how you can get involved with a live coding community and possibly stream yourself. So let's get going because we have a lot of content to get through and uh, I think there is a Slido so if you want to go onto the Slido and add any questions there I, I will be checking them I'll be checking them on my phone uh, periodically so uh, there may be a delay on me getting to those uh, so a little bit about me my name's Layla Porter I am a developer advocate at VMware I'm a Microsoft MVP a GitHub star and an MK.NET organizer. Uh, I'm gonna switch us over to the nighttime mode, just so it's a little bit darker. Uh, and we'll be flipping between here and some other scenes as well. So uh, the more important stuff you'll see uh, on a bigger screen, so don't worry. And I will share a link to the slides so you don't need to be frantically scribbling or taking screenshots unless you want to. So, Let's get into some details. You've probably heard of Twitch. It's best known for gaming. And uh, you probably think, well, why would I want to live code on that? But there is a huge community of live coders growing on Twitch. Uh, if you're wondering, the scan lines on my uh, projector here, it's a hollow projector, it's a little bit temperamental, it's very irradiating, um, and we let it just have its scan line. So don't worry, it's perfectly normal for the hollow projector, which you can see just over there uh, beside my desk. Uh, and learning on Twitch is quite an experience and sharing your knowledge. Uh, so let's go and see what other streams kind of look like. So if I come over here, you can see I'm in a big screen. That's, that's quite a common thing you'll see. Um, but a lot of the time you'll see screens like this. Um, and let's just go and have a chat about you as a viewer. Now, this is probably going to be the first place that you start with live coding on Twitch. You're not gonna jump into streaming and being on camera and, and bearing your learning experience to the world. You're gonna come on and watch it. Well, I would, I would think so. Uh, so there's a lot to learn just about being a good viewer. There's etiquette, there's uh, sort of things that happen on Twitch that can be really confusing and uh, I'm going to hopefully clarify some of those things for you. Now, I've done some polls through uh, Twitch and Twitter to find out why people like watching uh, Twitch. Uh, now, one of the things that comes up again and again is they like it as background noise. Uh, it's company. It's a bit like talk show radio, they'll listen to it in the background whilst they're working uh, and, and then they'll be like, oh, hang on, I have something to say about Signal R and that person's talking about Signal R and they'll come on and engage with the other members of chat or with um, the, the host and they'll have input, they'll learn stuff. So that's a good reason for coming on and watching Twitch. Uh, another point that comes up most frequently is they want to see how other developers solve problems. Uh, and I think this is a, a real big hint. This is where we learn, we learn through watching, seeing how other people approach those complicated things, how they architect systems, how they start doing all of this stuff. Uh, so that's a good draw. You can learn about code and dev flow, how other people uh, deploy their applications, how they approach problems, 
you can help others. As I said, if, if you were listening and the host was really stuck with something, they didn't know how to approach a problem, and you did, you've had that experience, you could go in and say, yes, I've been there, I've done that, this is how we approached it at my company, uh, this is what we did, um, and then you, you've helped someone, maybe you're sharing a GitHub link or something. Uh, so this is a, a really uh, nice part about Twitch uh, for me as a host, as well as a, as a streamer, to get that feedback and learn from my viewers. It's entertaining, uh, so you can be entertained by Twitch, you can, you can have laughs, people will have guests on, we'll chat about things, you can watch me try not to flip my table as I get really stuck into some problems, uh, usually revolving around JavaScript issues because I'm not the best at JavaScript. <laughs> And that's usually when I want to flip a table. Uh, and a small part of this is uh, networking. Uh, most streamers will have a Discord or be a member of a Discord. Uh, and lots of chat viewers come in and they look at uh, Discord and they get engaged uh, and meet new people and find jobs and, and friends and all sorts of things. So it's a really lovely community that is developing. So when you first come on to a uh, Twitch stream, it's really a good idea to go and have a look at um, some, some rules and regulations. I did want to switch us back over to my other view, but it is being a little bit temperamental. This is something that happens a lot on Twitch, so we're going to give it a go. We're back in here um, because Things happen in real time on Twitch. As you can see, I'm having some technical difficulties, and it's probably because I have about a gajillion USB things plugged into my computer, uh, and it's all going, oh, I don't know if I can do all of this. Uh, so that's a regular thing that happens, but we're gonna we're gonna roll with it because this is this is what happens. Um, so when we come on here, you. This is my actual about page on Twitch, um, and I have, uh, I support charity, so I have that. I am going to switch back over here because uh, to this one, I've just had a follower. You see, that's a thing. We have interactions. So I wasn't expecting followers. Thank you to whoever just followed. Um, we have uh, chat rules um, over there in the middle. Um, so that's kind of my code of conduct, and most streamers will have this. You might actually see it when you go into chat. Um, now, hiding behind me, it says, uh, from chat rules uh, to frequently asked questions, uh, the about page will tell you all about the streamer and what Ooh. they expect from you mm, as follower. a viewer Thank as well. There's, so a, there's another well follower. Thank you. Um, so have a read through there. It will also tell you some of the commands uh, and cool things like that. It might tell you a little bit about the streamer. It quite often tells you about their, their rig. So down the bottom here, you can see I talk about the hardware that I'm Ooh. running my system mm, on. Um, so and I do run quite welcome. a beefy system. I'm going to turn off those alerts, folks. Um, there we go. Thank you so much for all those follows. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can see I have my GitHub um, projects in there um, and uh, you know I've popped all of that in there so you can check that out and and have a look and see uh, you know on most streamers they'll tell you this kind of thing so coming over here um, so the big thing is that you want to be a part of the community uh, you want to get involved um, you want to, you, you'll get recognized, people will be like, oh, you know, there's so-and-so, hey, how are you doing today? Uh, so you feel really engaged, and it's very different from YouTube. Uh, you can, you know, you just come Ooh. and you, you're in this community. Uh, and just so to summarize, you're, you're learning new things, uh, you're going to help uh, solve problems in a collaborative way, and watch how others solve things and make friends. That, I think that's pretty cool. So I'm going to give you a glossary of terms as well, because there is a lot going on. What I'm going to do is just shuffle myself. I'm going to peep in from the side, just here. Actually, I'm going to move myself over here, because I know that I've got more space on this side. Uh, and you're probably wondering what I'm broadcasting to you from. Uh, we're going to go and I'm going to demo the equipment I'm using, the software I'm using to do all of this for you. Uh, so a glossary here, right above my head, I have a raid, uh, and this is when a streamer will, when finished usually, only when, when they're finished and they're about to stop streaming, they'll take all of their viewers over to another streamer. I just need a 
quick. So once you, you they finish, they take everyone over to this other channel. And so you'll Ooh. suddenly find yourself mm. on another, another person's stream. And you'll be Thank like, you so wait, much. how did welcome. I get here? So that's called a raid. Then you have a subscription. Uh, you can, uh, that, that does differ quite a lot from a YouTube subscription. A YouTube subscription um, in Twitch would be a follower. So all those people who just followed me, that's the same as a subscriber on Twitch, uh, on YouTube. But on Ooh, Twitch, a subscriber is someone who has Thank paid so to subscribe to the channel for a month. Ooh, um, the lowest another. rate is about uh, five dollars, so and they translate it to the local currency. Um, and then they have three tiers, so then it's like five, ten, and fifteen dollars. And what that gives a streamer, uh, sorry, a viewer, is um, they'll get uh, free emotes. They'll get ad free. That's the main draw. No adverts on Twitch, uh, so they, they don't get any interruptions to the stream. Uh, and the higher tiers, they get more bonuses or maybe um, different things from the stream and maybe private channels on Discord. Maybe they get to ask more questions. So there's a lot of things around what they're subscribing to. Cheers is um, they're, they're bits. It's an in-game Twitch currency. You buy it and you get bits back. Uh, a single bit is about one cent or the equivalent in local currency and you can throw as many bits as you want in a cheer to um, motivate a streamer on to do something or if they succeed you can throw some bits at them and many people just will drop one or two bits or they'll drop 10,000 bits uh, so it varies wildly channel points behind me um, this is quite an interesting one by watching a stream you gain channel points so it rewards you for being in uh, viewing the the stream and then streamers can interact with that and show you some stuff so for example I'm going to um, call one of my interactions on here now so if I go I've got the twitch chat on here I'm doing it on my phone because I'm scared to overload my system right now um, so, hang on, that's all gone. Um, I mean, if we go chat, I'm going to call a reward now. So I have um, one. It's not, do you know what? It's because I'm not logged in on here. <laughs> I don't know why it's not going, but I can do one, a different one. Uh, go no it's not going to go Ooh, my phone is going to be a pest uh, let's go pup so rain and welcome there we go so I've just put Ooh, a command in chat and you can see I had some puppy heads so drop much. down and now that's welcome. kind of the sort of thing that people can do with their channel rewards if we go to uh, this room I have some other things in here so if I go So if you watch over my shoulder. These people are here to protect you. They're soldiers. But what you do could hurt us. Now don't worry, aliens aren't going to come bounding from behind me. It's all fine. Uh, but people can redeem things within your stream. You can create lots of interactivity. Uh, so I think that is um, pretty cool um, uh, and a nice use of channel points and rewarding people for viewing your content. Now, another one is gift subs. This is very similar to um, subscriptions, but this is something a viewer can do. They can gift a subscription or multiple subscriptions to other people in the chat. Uh, they can do it to random people. They can specify, well, I'd like this viewer to get this one because uh, they were really supportive or something like that. Um, and it's a way of people who maybe already have a subscription uh, supporting their favorite streamer even more so, giving them more um, like more money, more subscriptions, more people getting involved and, and growing that particular streamer's channel. Uh, and the final one I, on the far side there is Hype Train. This one really confused me. Um, when lots of people are throwing bits and, and cheering and subscriptions and gift subscriptions, Twitch starts something called a Hype Train. Everything's going crazy. Uh, there's a bar at the top with a little train and it's a way of trying to get more and more people hyped throwing money, uh, effectively earning Twitch more money, uh, but there's a whole thing about like, yay, let's go, and that's called a hype train. It, it can be quite like intense. 
so that's just some regular terms that you may or um, may come across when you go on to Twitch. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, if you go and look in the browsing the categories, uh, most streamers will be on software and game development, and you'll find them in a a sort of environment like this um, uh, and you can go and browse all the categories there's lots of them on there uh, and really just go and see uh, what takes your fancy at any time of the day uh, now this is probably an interesting bit Ooh, what are we going to do for you when you come Thank to you so actually stream? And what I'm going to say is you do not need a setup like the one in that picture, okay? You do not need a room made in unity with your shadows. I mean, it's nice. If you want that, you can do that. And you can do puppet, uh, like puppet shad shadow puppets, that's the word, um, and have all of that. But you absolutely do not need any of this, okay? We're, we're going to go over what you actually need. I'm going to see if this is a bit more stable now. It's that pesky hollow projector. So I want to explain uh, why I stream on Twitch. No, the hollow projector is pushing everything over the edge, isn't it? We'll see how it goes. Um, so where was I? Nope, I'm going to go over here. It's all good. I'm prepared for this. It's fine. Ooh, this happens. You have to be well, really it's fluent it's when you're, you're streaming. Welcome. Everything can go wrong and will go wrong. Now, I stream on Twitch for a number of reasons. And the first thing is I'm an advocate. I'm not in an engineering team working day in, day out. So what Twitch does is force me to write code consistently every week. It also means that I can't give up. If I'm watching a stream, uh, oh, sorry, if I am streaming and people are watching me, I can't just go, oh, I can't do this. I'm going to go and make a coffee. I'm going to go and browse Netflix for an hour. I can't do that. I have to keep going. Um, I'm, I'm forced to keep pushing through it. So it makes me very accountable to my own uh, self-learning. And that's why I think learning in public, however you do it, is really beneficial. Because you might learn in public on, on um, by writing blogs or creating YouTube videos or even speaking at conferences like this. Uh, it really makes you accountable when you learn in public. Uh, I also like the power of rubber ducking. By verbalizing my problems that I'm facing in code, it can sort through things in my head. Um, and it can also sort through my thought process, which other developers may find helpful, or they may go, wowzers, her brain does not work in a normal way. Uh, but either way, it's a really good way of rubber ducking. Uh, you can also have mob programming, so um, what I often will do is share a uh, Visual Studio live share link to my viewers and they can come in and have a look through uh, the code. If it's a viewer that I trust, I might send them a private link to modify the code, so not a read-only link, so we can do all of that and go through. Um, uh, and I find people in chat really inspiring. I may approach a problem and they're like, Layla, there's another way that you can approach this. Have you thought of doing X, Y, Z? And I'll be like, oh, wow, that's a really interesting idea. And you can explore it. So it can be really inspiring. It's also a company because people are there coding with you. You're going about your, your coding stuff that you have to do. And you've got friends there to do it with you. Uh, and uh, I think it's made me a much better conference speaker because I'm used to speaking more fluidly about uh, code. I'm used to dealing with problems as they come up and not having a freak out if my demos don't go right uh, or, or if things just go wrong in general. I'm, I feel far more prepared to, to cope with things. I, I think if you've uh, seen Clifford Aegis talk, he's a he's an, uh, pilot, he's probably around the conference, he does IoT stuff, but he gives a great talk on calming your inner chimp, I think it is, which is this thing going crazy inside you. And, and he has to do that as an airline pilot. Uh, and I think that's kind of what you do with streaming. You overcome all of these issues. And that could be public speaking within your company, presenting ideas to your team and things like that. I just think there's lots of ways that it can help you. Alrighty, so those are my reasons. Yours may be very different, um, but I think it helps to understand mine so you can start thinking about yours. Now, 
getting started and what you actually need. Okay, right, let's, let's go. This is a big section. Uh, so what I want you to do is start small but dream big because if you go out and buy all the kit and then you stream two or three times and absolutely hate it, what are you going to do with all this kit? You may absolutely hate it and that's okay too. If you don't like it, it's not for you, that's fine. Uh, but the bare minimum I would say you need is a discrete microphone. Now you can just use like a mobile phone headset like this with uh, a microphone like this. Um, many of us have been uh, doing Zoom and working from home, so you may even have a microphone like this one. Um, just try not to use the one that's built into your laptop, for example. Uh, that's not going to be the best audio for you. Uh, definitely try and get something discreet like this, and make sure you have headphones, so if you are listening to music or something, um, it's not reverberating through your microphone. Uh, you'll need a way to broadcast your stuff, your content, uh, and you'll also need um, some patience because audiences don't magic out of nowhere. They, they do take a little bit of time, so it can be a little bit scary when you turn that start streaming button on and you're like, oh, there's just me and my, my mate in this and I'm talking to nobody. So it, it, it can be a little bit daunting. You just need a little bit of time and patience. All right, this is the information overload. You will get the, a link to these slides. So just absorb and relax. Um, all right, I'm going to shuffle me around a little bit because I'm going to make me jump here. Here I am. Uh, all right, there's a few things here. I'm currently streaming from OBS, which is uh, open broadcasting software. It's free, it's open source, uh, it's pretty robust. Uh, it is a little bit complicated, but we'll, we'll go and have a look at that in a minute. Restream, this is quite easy to use. There's a free tier. It allows you to broadcast to multiple platforms. There's a lot of built-in functionality. StreamYard, very similar to Restream. Um, there are several others, um, and if I turn off uh, this bar down the bottom, you'll be able to see the other links. So I'm just going to hang around down here for now. Uh, we've got several uh, others. There's a link that way to uh, the Twitch page and you can go and have a look. I think there's, there's a good load of things that you can use to stream with. Uh, alrighty, so OBS. You'll need to download it. Uh, it runs locally. There are a lot of plugins that you can put into it. So for example, um, there are filters that you can use like to correct fisheye, uh, closed caption um, X plugins so that it will automatically uh, do your um, closed captioning for those that are hard of hearing. Um, there are Twitch extensions that do that as well. Um, lots of Twitch extensions that they plug in around the Twitch window. And then you have a stream elements, um, which will, I'll also show you a little bit of well, as well, which has chatbots and overlays, timers, and loads of interactivity. So I think it's probably best if we just go into a demo. Um, so this is uh, in a VM. Um, my VM is being, it's not quite the, the ratio I would like it. There we go, that's better. I must have reframed it somehow. Um, I've already downloaded OBS on here, so I'm going to open it up. Um, and I'm going to shuffle me over to the other side. Do, 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 do. If I was with you, I'd be dancing around the stage now. So just imagine me walking back and around the stage, making use of that space um, and trying not to be scared of falling off the edge. Um, OK, so OBS comes and it, it, it's a steep learning curve. It's like when you go into Premiere or any Adobe thing, it's like, oh my god, all these things. Uh, but I've got you covered there as well. Uh, I have a um, GitHub repo that has a basic um, scene collection for you. The link will be um, in the slides. Now if we go and have a look at that, this will help you get started much easier than doing that. Uh, so we can go to scene collection. So this is like all the different views. I've been showing you several different views. Um, and we're going to import. Um, and I've already downloaded this and I have it on my desktop. It's in a JSON file as well. Uh, and then I'm going to import it. 
And what you'll see is over on the far side, if I switch to it, I've now got a whole load of things. It's really hard to make um, things on uh, OBS bigger. So I do apologize if this looks a little bit small for you watching um, in person. But I divide things up into scenes, which is what you view, and components, which um, build the scenes. Uh, so if I have a talk, you can see it's a, a collection of actual scenes. And I prefix scene, uh, the components with a C. Um, and then in there, I have a bar. So that would be like the bottom bar I showed you. There'll be a microphone in here. Uh, there's a camera and there's a background. Now, one of the reasons my system is going a little bit nuts is because I do have a third camera plugged into my machine. So if we go and um, look at this camera, I'm going to go um, and select it. So you'll get this pop up and you can come in here and I'm going to select the camera. It's a bit slow. It's not my best camera. Hi. Uh, and I'm going to make that bigger. Uh, this has a filter on it already. Um, now filters are like uh, promo keys. So you can see my green screen behind me. Uh, you don't need a green screen, but if you do, this is how you would uh, chroma key it out. There are a whole collection of filters in here and audio visual effects. Uh, there's a lot of things to go and play with and you can have more plugged in as well. So um, if I leave that camera in here, um, I can control F to make it full screen. And now if I Ooh, come and look at follower. this desktop Thank view, you, so much. you can and see welcome. I've got my desktop in here, I've got me, uh, and you can start to control different things. They're all little components. And what it does mean is that if I wanted, you see how I'm not centered in anything? If I come here and center me on the component, when I go and look at talk, I'm now centered. When I go and look at desktop, I'm now centered. And that's a nice reason for having things in components. Everything, um, you just adjust it in one place or turn it off in one place. So if I don't want any camera in any of my scenes, I go here and I turn it off. And now it's not going to show in any of them. So it, it, it's like abstracting your code into a base class kind of thing. So think of it like that. It's really useful. You can control audio from in here. Um, there's lots of things that you can control. Uh, now, I mentioned stream elements as well. This is a free um, site, um, and it has lots of things. And I'm actually going to switch this to a light mode somehow. Switch to light mode. It's going to be easier for you to see on the projector. Um, in here, you have a chat bot. Uh, so you don't even have to build your own chatbot. You can come in here and have chat commands. They come with a whole load of uh, pre-built ones. You can turn them off and on. You can also create your own. So I have like a shout out here. So if I want to highlight another streamer, I can say, um, I, I can use some options in here. I've got, there's some templates in there. It's like a dollar curly braced one. Um, so I can now put it, some values in uh, and it will go and, and respond with a link, a full link for that. Um, or I can have, if I have guests on the show or something, you know, people are always asking what Visual Studio theme I'm using. So I actually have a chat command that will, will share that with them and, and things like that. So there's a lot of things in there. You can have timers, uh, so something that appears regularly in your chat. Um, you can have spam filters, which is great. Uh, so if you don't like people responding all in caps, you can you can block that. Um, so there's a whole load of stuff in there. And then overlays gallery. If you don't want to build your own um, like layouts, overlays are sort of browser feeds that you can bring in to make things look cool. So all those alerts that were popping up, um, like we're saying who followed, they come from stream elements. Uh, so you can go and, and some of these might be free, you might have to pay for some of them, but there'll be a lot of themes in here that you can just use out of the box. Uh, now you can build your own, I have my own uh, overlays here, so you know that alert we were looking at earlier. Uh, we can come in here and edit it. Um, so you'll see that there's nothing here, but if you want to, I, I can trigger it. Now this is going to trigger it on the main view as well probably. Uh, oh no, it's because it's on a different account. Uh, so I can trigger them, I can see how they look. 
if I have a, like a subscriber event, so if someone pays something in it, I can do that. Um, that you can have spe speak text to speech as well, all sorts of fun things to play with. Uh, and then all you do is grab the link here um, and they'll give you a link and you can drop that as a browser feed. So if I um, come over here, uh, there are some interesting bots in here. Um, this one, is it gonna show us? It might be, there it is. So I have this 3D cup um, and it's gonna have events happening. So that's, I don't know what's going on there, but someone's done something and it fills up this little cup. Um, and now if I want that on my overlays, I can copy it, uh, open up OBS. Uh, let's go and add a new scene. So you can do this um, down the bottom by adding a scene. We'll do C for component and then go uh, cheer cup. And then we go and add the actual source of that. And then in here we go browser because we're getting it from stream elements. We can go cheer cup. Okay. And now in here we're going to paste the link that we got. Uh, my resolution here is... Uh, 1920 by 1080. Oh, it doesn't tell me. 1920 by 1080. Uh, okay. And then I think we should be able to emulate it. I'm not convinced about this one. Um, but if I added that cheer cup to, say, my talk scene, I don't um, want to do it here. I go and add a component to the scene. Uh, so there's an option here to add a scene and I go and find cheer cup and add it and that will pop it in here now I don't know why that's not showing I think it is tied slightly to being on the right account and I haven't given this overlay an account or anything um, so that's like how you can really get things looking cool with minimal effort okay so I think that's what I wanted to show you for the time being so let's go back over on to the slides um, so that's a really good start. I'm going to shuffle myself back over the other side. Whee! I've just run across the stage. Uh, and this is your basic setup. So you've got scenes, um, and that's what we built in the JSON file. Uh, so you can have that, and you can see how I put it together and learn from that. But you usually have a start scene, uh, a full camera view. So that's this view. Uh, you saw my start scene earlier. I'll just flip to it. I actually have that, had that custom made for when I had blonde hair, uh, but it's a, a, just a little video that loops always. Uh, we can go to the desktop, which is this scene, a be right back, which is really important. So my be right back, I'll just flip. It wasn't scaled properly. I normally broadcast at much higher resolution. Uh, and then a finishing one. Uh, so I have a slightly different one for my end. I'll just flip to it quickly. Um, so you can see uh, lots of different scenes for all the eventualities. Uh, audio quality is one of the hardest things to get right on a stream. Uh, I use a tool called Voice Meter. It's uh, donationware, um, and that helps me manage all of my audio feeds. So I can actually pump in my music, browsers, desktop applications through there and control each um, audio input. Uh, individually which you, is, it's a virtual mixer um, my own audio comes through there so I can control all the levels of like making sure music isn't too loud that I'm pumped up uh, you may also want to look at noise cancellation uh, if you've got a discrete graphics card that supports RTX voice then you can use that if not there are some software programs that you can get um, there might be free ones but a lot of them are going to be subscription they are more intense because they um, they are AI driven, so it depends where they do it. If it's a local application, it's going to be more resource heavy on your machine. Um, music, I'll cover that in a minute. Uh, and then stream settings, you need to know about bit rate, uh, resolution of your stream, so that's what we're broadcasting at now. Uh, there's a great blog post in there that goes through bit rates for developers because it's very different from games. When you set up Twitch, it will go through and do your recommended settings, but they may not be the best for you as a coder. So go check out that blog post. There's loads of examples on it uh, of like different bit rates and, and you can go and test it yourself. Right, 
So music is, I'm going to move myself here, I'm going across the stage again. Um, DMCA strikes. So this is if you have, let's say you just play your Spotify playlist. Uh, Twitch will hear that. They'll go, mm, you don't have permission to broadcast that. That's uh, um, copyrighted music. Uh, they'll initially mute some of your stream, but if you get a, uh, you might get a strike, you'll get warnings. They'll ban you. You'll have like a 30 day ban. Um, they'll fine you. So just it's just not worth it. Be really careful. I think you've got about 10 seconds uh, leeway. So say you turn on a YouTube video and it plays uh, We Will Rock You for 10 seconds. You're OK. Just turn it off or mute it. Uh, there's lots of royalty free music services. Uh, so we have Pretzel Rocks, that's what I use, Epidemic Sounds, uh, and then there's Harris Heller Stream Beats. So let me come out of this again. Uh, so, uh, Chris, let me have a look through some of these things here. Let me get rid of that. Crisp AI is um, a noise cancellation service. And then we've got Harris Heller. Uh, he is a streamer and he produces music online and he lets streamers play music. There are some YouTube, um, some of his playlists and Spotify, so you may be able to find them if you look for Harris Heller. He's got stuff for every type of stream, so you can play it. They're all royalty free. I don't think I have the sound wired in for this VMT. You may not hear it, um, but you can go and play these uh, without any, uh, any problem. I like lo-fi for my streams, um, but that's it. Uh, they, you have pretzel.rock, so this downloads a little app. I actually really like the mini music on this. Um, and what's nice about this is it's all, they can have YouTube safe music, you can have a, a no lyrics, um, no expletives, uh, you can set it to be um, no vocal. Uh, there's lots of customizability on it. I think it's a really great service. You can have it free, but you have to attribute it in your chat. Um, uh, or you can pay for it. Um, it's like five dollars a month. So I think it's pretty, pretty worthwhile. They have an API so you can show stuff in your chat. I, I, I think it's it, it's a really good option. Epidemic Sounds is harder to use. It's more if you're making YouTube content, so you download it and attach it to your video. Uh, but it's still a really good uh, service. So back to the slides, uh, and I'm sure there's plenty more. Uh, free, royalty free music, or you don't have to have music at all. Okie dokie. Um, and remember, if you've got questions, pop them in the Slido and I'll try to get to them at the end. Uh, controlling stuff, um, a Stream Deck is probably the most common. That's a, a little device. Let me see if I can pick it up without dropping it. <laughs> Come here, little one. Oh my god, there we go. Um, so that way we can, let me press a button on it and go this scene, there you go. Uh, I can just about get it in, it's, it's tethered. Um, so it has lots of buttons on it that you can program. Uh, and it's not just for streaming, you can program like Visual Studio builds to it and all sorts of things. If you don't want to splash out on that, you can get an app. So let me go back over to here. This above my head is the app for your phone. Uh, you do have to pay for it, um, uh, but you can, See how you go. You don't have to have it. You can flip scenes directly in OBS. This just makes it a little bit easier to control everything. But don't feel that you need it. Um, right. Lighting and green screen. Now, let's start with lighting face. I'm quite well illuminated now. I'm going to turn off my lights now so you can see why lighting is so important. Uh, my camera's caught up, but I, I, it's not it's not nearly as good as that. Uh, it's not as flattering. I've got if I didn't have my um, side lights on, I'd be really disappearing. So it it, it is important. I'd be illuminated by my screen. Uh, I might look ghostly. Uh, it's really really important to have lights. Now that could just be some lights you've got lying around the house, uh, or you may go and get custom ones. Just have some light on you. Um, Lighting the green screen is really important. I'll, uh, I've got a slide on that next on how you do that. Uh, you saw I had lights either side of me then. Um, and you, for a green screen, I'll call it green screen, but it could be blue, it could be magenta. Uh, so there's a streamer, um, 
coding garden. He has green hair and green seat, so he has a blue screen, so he can wear green. Uh, I wouldn't be able to wear green. Uh, sometimes I have green mugs, and I've got these chroma uh, keying mugs. So it can be, um, you just have to think about what colors you're wearing. Uh, so if you do have a green screen, it's really important to light it well. Um, so I have two lights up either side of me in front. I can control the brightness of them. So if um, I wanted to turn one light down, I could get like effects, different things. I'll turn this up. Um, the ones I have have temperature control so I can make them quite cold. Ugh, I look almost sick and partly frozen. Or I can really warm them up and I'm like, Oh, I'm in the tropics, I've got a suntan. You know, so you can suit the lighting for you and your skin tone. Um, I often have a backlight, I don't have it on now, um, that would be above me, and that illuminates sort of the top of your head, the back of your head, and it helps give you a really good cutout. And I also have lights either side of me, just like in the picture, illuminating my green screen, which again gives me a nice even colour and gives a much better cutout. You can see I really, I don't have any fringing or anything because I'm well lit and my green screen's well lit. Um, so there's a lot of key things. This is my setup. I blurred out all the messy bits. Uh, so I run with three monitors. I have an ultra wide in front of me that I have my VM on. Uh, I have two uh, 24 inch computers up high, uh, which I use for monitoring. I put chat up there so I make sure that my eye line is nice and high. Um, I have a camera in the middle, uh, so you are now looking at me on the middle one, and then there's one up higher, so when I'm in this room, you'll notice I'll look up, because that one is a different camera there. Um, so, you know, you don't need any of this, though, but I think it's uh, people are always quite interested in the kind of things that I have running. Um, my actual kit, then. Uh, I have various newer lights, that is with a double E. You can get those straight off Amazon, they're pretty good quality, they're cheap, so my, my side lights are those, they're remote controlled, you can change the temperature, uh, they come with tripods, I think they're really, really good value. Uh, the two ones up at the top at Elgato, they're ridiculously expensive and not really worth it. They are nice and flat panels, uh, but you can get much cheaper than that. Um, I have a Madewell capture card, again, ridiculously expensive, I don't think you need it. I have uh, two Myrabox capture cards, I think they're pretty good, they're, they're much more reasonable, um, and yeah, they're fine. Uh, so the capture cards are if you have an actual physical camera or you want to capture a laptop feed. If you're just going to have a webcam, uh, you don't need a capture card. Um, my camera is a Sony A6100. I have a Sony, a Sony vlog camera. It's like an XR1 or something. Um, my mic is a Hyper, um, Hyper, Hyper X Quadcast. Uh, and then the Stream Deck that you saw. But you definitely don't need all of this. Um, affiliate and partner, uh, this is how you earn money. You have to meet certain requirements to become an affiliate. So I'm just an affiliate. And then if you want to hit partner, you have to have like an average viewership of 75 people over 30 days and stream on so many days. It's quite a hard thing and you, you definitely don't need it. So affiliate allows you to earn money. You can customize emotes and uh, rewards and all sorts of things. You do earn money from advertising. Um, and then partner, partner only you get uh, more perks and live transcoding. Uh, now, so general tips. Remember I mentioned raiding. Um, at the end, if you want to raid someone, go and raid them, hang around for like five minutes, ask them what they're doing, chat to them, they'll ask you what you're doing. Same goes if someone raids you. Uh, wait for a few moments because you get these pre-roll adverts so they may not directly come into your stream. Uh, so just wait for a, a few moments. You'll see people saying hi and chat. Um, and then you can be like, oh, hey, what, what were you coding on? Thank you for the raid. So just be polite. Go live early because the go live notifications that go and tell your followers that you're live, uh, they take a little while to go out. So like go live 15 minutes. You can get a countdown widget uh, from Stream Elements and just like 15 minutes and have it count down. Get a test account as well so you can you can broadcast in secret so no one sees what you're doing and you can experiment. That's a, that's a good tip, that one. You can get all your statistics as well. Uh, they're within Twitch. You can get them from uh, external services, Sully Gnome and Twitch Tracker. It's good to see where your viewers are coming from, streamers who raid you often or 
streamers you have viewers in common with. Um, and then just be familiar with the Twitch terms of service. Like you're not allowed to get absolutely drunk uh, off your face and run around naked on stream. <laughs> just one of those things. <laughs> That's your thing. You can't do it on Twitch. And just remember, start small, dream big. It can take a while for people to find your stream. Uh, you need to go and maybe engage on other people's streams, um, but don't actively promote your own channel. Not <laughs> Don't go into like Jeff Fritz and go, hi, um, by the way, come and check out my C-sharp stream. Don't, don't hang around with Jeff Fritz here. Come, come and hang out with me. Don't do that. Just go and be like, oh, hi, you know, oh, oh I've got a dash. I'm going to go stream or, or raid that person, you know, hang out and chat. And then next time you're on, go and raid them. And they'll be like, oh, you're a streamer too. Oh, what were you doing? And you build these connections, networking remember uh, don't stop talking you can see I can talk for hours and hours and hours I do breathe I promise you um, but don't stop talking even if it's just you because there's video on demand um, people aren't telepathic so they'll come and watch your videos later uh, when you've stopped broadcasting they'll go and oh, let's see what this person is doing and then if you're sat there in silence they're like um, I don't know what they're doing I'm just gonna go so don't shut up just Keep talking, Ooh, talk about thing. anything, externalize yeah, your thought you so processes. Uh, and then try out different titles and topics. If you think, oh, this really isn't working, go and try uh, a different title, a different topic. Um, almost a bit clickbaity, I guess, is what you want to have a go. Um, and then just give it a go. Just go ahead and, and have a go. Now, key thing that a lot of streamers miss is caring about chat. It is so vitally important that you care about chat. Um, interactivity, if chat is active, you will be motivated to continue. Um, mob programming, chat loves to give you their opinion. They love to come up with suggestions. If you're stuck, they'll be throwing bits of code into chat. They are there to support you and cheer you on and be, be your champions. Uh, and also nosiness. When people are looking through that big old list that I showed you of, um, of, of channels that are live, if they see that you've got 20 viewers, they'll be like, oh, what are, what's everyone watching over there? If they see like one, they'll be like, well, they're there on their own. They mustn't be very interesting. And that, that might not be true. So chat, you get more. If you engage with chat, they'll hang around and then you'll get more. So it's a, it's a nice little snowball effect. And just remember those reasons that we pointed out earlier, why people like to watch live coding. Uh, background noise, see how problems are solved, learn stuff, help others, entertainment, networking, and all of that. Other viewer interaction, uh, we have clips. So if someone uh, sees you do something funny or really likes what you did on stream, they'll make a clip like up to 30 seconds. Um, and actually Jeff Fritz on his stream, C Sharp Fritz, he's built this whole service called Clip Talk. It's like TikTok for streams, uh, stream clips. Go and check it out, it's awesome. Uh, he talks about how he built it as well because it's huge, it's, it's, it's epic. You can do polls, you can run polls directly in chat and get viewer feedback. That's how I got all the feedback um, for this chart. Uh, video on demand, so as I said, your videos, if you toggle the button, will stay for a couple of weeks. Um, and then channel points. Uh, remember my reigning puppies and my visitors, that's all uh, channel point redemption stuff for people to be interactive with your stream. Uh, you can get chatbots, uh, stream elements as a chatbot, there's night not bot, just search, there's a plethora of them. You can build your own, it's a really good first project to do when you first start streaming, um, is go into Twitch and build a chatbot. Um, if you want a starting point, if we go into my GitHub, um, if you want to play around with one, please uh, feel free to come in here and find down here eventually uh, in here there is a chatbot somewhere uh, MVC twitch chatbot there you go um, this is built with signal R and twitch lib um, please go and feel free it's how I do all the puppies and everything and, and other stuff uh, so you can go and find that in my github clone it play with it um, you can use uh, twitch lib which wraps all the the APIs and Fidget is like an API substitute that allows you to test the things that you can't test yourself, like subscriptions and raids. Uh, there are some fun user built um, 
chatbots. Uh, so there's giftbot.io, Lash Tools, Featured Chat's really cool. Uh, that pops up chat messages on your stream, um, the ones you choose. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty cool. And then there's actually live coding. Yay! Notice how big my font on Visual Studio is. Okay, it's ginormous. So just remember that as well. Make it huge. Now, a key thing is finding your own voice. Find a style of presenting and streaming that suits you. If you want to change things and mix it up, do, but you know, find your own style. Don't try and copy other streams. Um, people are there for you. That's a key thing you need to remember. They're there for you as the person. Uh, be authentic, but don't feel you have to bear your heart and soul. And in case I didn't say it, if you don't want to appear on camera at first, don't. You don't have to, okay? Uh, I personally like seeing people on camera, but if you're not confident to do it and it's too much for you, you don't have to. Just be a voice and code. That's okay too. Do what suits you. Uh, there's a couple of preparation approaches. You can do fully planned, probably best when you're starting. Have a good idea about what you want to achieve. Uh, have some proof of concepts. Have the code already written and you copy and paste it. Two, slightly planned. Maybe you've looked at the documentation. You've got some code snips. Or when you're confident, seat of pants, come in, go, I know nothing about this topic. Let's go and find it out. That's generally what I do, but then I've been streaming for several years. Um, Layla needs to go for a walk. I'm gonna, oh, I'm just gonna stretch my legs and go this side of the, uh, the stage. Uh, privacy, this is quite key. Uh, doxing, know how to fix it. Doxing is where you flash your secrets up on stream. Um, I do it really um, often. Um, it's horrible, it's scary. I actually have an alarm uh, that goes on my virtual room, so when I'm in here, can I do it? quickly enough. Come on, I'm connecting to chat. Um, oh my goodness, no, my, my, my phone app has crashed, so I can't show you, uh, but I have alarms that uh, hide my screen and bring me back into the view. Um, make sure physical stuff, if you haven't got a green screen, make sure that you're not showing like bank records or or things, or if you're showing something that's been delivered, make sure the address is scribbled out and stuff like that. Um, email address, it can, like if you go to a site and Google will kindly autofill your forms for you, which may give away your phone number, your address, your email address, all that stuff. So just be really mindful of things like that. Um, names of viewers. So for example, if my friend Chris is in stream, but his name is um, like, Norse streamer, I don't know. And I go, hi, Chris. He may not want everyone to know his name is Chris. He may just, just call people by their handle, even if you know who they are. Just go, hey, Norse streamer, it's fine, okay? So just remember that. Just respect other people's privacy as well. Um, and then just so you know, this is what it can feel like when you're streaming. You're doing so many different things. You're staying on top of chat, keeping viewers engaged, managing a live broadcast, changing scenes, doing all of that jazz, and remembering how to code. It's really <laughs> so much to get hold of. So just know that this is gonna be a thing, okay? Um, and it can feel like chat is like shouting at you and they're telling you, no, that's not how you do it. You need to do it like this. Just know that they mean well um, and they don't mean like that. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, take a break, tell chat that you're, you're gonna try this one idea and then circle back. If you can't make progress, pivot, do something else, it's fine, or, or just stop. Also have things that you've made earlier, that's a blue Peter, um, and just show them, oh, I made this one earlier, let's just go through that. And, and just take a break. And if you have to stop streaming for the day, then do so. Uh, trolls, I love these little guys here. Uh, don't feed them. So these are people who come on and make nasty comments and just cause a ruckus. Uh, don't feed them, have some mods. Auto mod features on Twitch are really quite good. Um, and actions, time people out, ban them if necessary, okay? Um, it's your stream, you're in control. Make sure you've only got people who are enriching your stream, not trying to derail it and take it away from you. Now, um, participate in the community, uh, support others, and they will support you. Remember, it's a community of people all working together, learning code together. It really is a fantastic environment. Um, 
when I lost my job earlier in the year, this was all, this is my penthouse room. Uh, they dropped coins and gift subs and it was so overwhelming. It was, the support from the community was amazing. Um, so, you know, it's a really lovely environment to be a part of. There's always gonna be some bad actors, but just know how to deal with them. Um, now, if you want some streams to check out, uh, you can check out the VMware Tamsu team. That's um, my work team. Uh, I have a chat show every Tuesday called .NET in the Wild. It's on at uh, 4.30 GMT, so uh, 5.30 PM CET. Uh, and every week I have a different guest on and we just chat about you know various things in the community uh, or what they're doing. Um, I stream on Thursdays on my own channel and I do pop-up streams. Check out the software and game dev uh, category. And then the live coders, there's a link on this uh, stream, is uh, Jeff Fritz's team that I'm part of. There's like 150 streamers of all different um, disciplines on there. So you can go and have a look at them. And then just give it a go. If you have any questions, ask me. I'm gonna drop my Discord link. You can come in and ask me lots of questions. I'm happy to help you if you have questions about tech or, or anything. I'd love to help you get started. Um, so you know, feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm conscious of time, so I wanna leave time for your questions. Layla needs to move again. <laughs> there we go. So I'll leave this one up. Uh, the slides are on that link in that on the top there, say, so this is the scene you wanna take a photo of, okay? Um, there's my Discord link here, various GitHub links. Um, and then let me come and see, I had Slido open somewhere. Okay, right, number one, how often do I stream? Uh, so I stream twice a week. You can um, uh, stream as often or as little as you want, just try and do it regularly. If you do it every other Tuesday, do it every other Tuesday. Um, uh, do what suits you around your life, your work, your family, your hobbies. Just let your viewers know. So I stream two or three times a week. I do one on the work channel and then I do one on my channel on a Thursday and then I do various other ones. I do co-working some mornings as well. Um, so yeah, do what suits you. You can, like some people stream once a month, that's okay. If you stream the first Tuesday of every month, people will learn that. Do what, do what works for you. Just be consistent. Uh, do I notice a drop in viewers after taking a break? Yes, people have to re-find you because you've broken that routine. Um, you have to restart your routine um, and it will take another couple of weeks for people to, to find you. You may want to publicize things on YouTube um, uh, um, I don't know what happened on YouTube there, okay. Um, so, you know, you want to advertise on Twitter, let people know what's, what's happening. Um, do I prefer long overarching code projects or shorter projects that fit into one session? And what gets better engagement? Um, so I do a, a little bit of everything. Uh, I, so for months I've worked on my Tacky Tacos project which is a distributed system so we've been doing things like uh, Eureka into it so uh, service discovery, queues, service buses, um, we've been doing um, all sorts of awesome stuff on that but it's a huge project and then I sometimes I mix it up um, if I do a pop-up stream I might say okay we're gonna there's a new feature, minimal APIs, for example. I, I'm gonna just do a stream on minimal APIs. So I tend to have a big project I'm working on and I occasionally mix it up. Um, I think, I don't really notice any pros and cons about it. Um, if you're doing an, a long project, then I'd say uh, quite a few people, are, you're gonna have to keep people up to speed and regularly update them. If you're doing a, 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 a topic per stream, you don't have to cover so much ground and repeat yourself so much. You're like, hey, this is what we're doing. Let's get it done. But it's really hard to get things done in one stream. Uh, things go off on tangents, things break. Uh, that's something I'd say, really make sure that you, you're you not worried about not finishing stuff, okay? Because uh, if you plan an hour long amount of content in an hour, you're not gonna finish it. Plan 20 minutes for an hour's content. That's my tip. 
because it will take you an hour to do your 20 minutes of planned content with chat interactions. So give yourself plenty of time. Try not to do too much. That would be my my thing in there. But I don't really see any difference. It's what, what interests you. If you're bored of doing something, mix it up. Do something different. Um, let's see. Liz says, what has been the most unexpected thing you have learned from live streaming? I don't know the unexpected, but the most valuable is definitely how to fix things on the fly and not having a meltdown. I think that's been the most valuable thing. Um, uh, is it worth it for financial motives or mostly just as a hobby? Um, I, I don't... I don't think you earn a mu a much. I give all of mine to charity, um, and I guess I probably earn between 100 and 150 pounds a month off my stream, uh, if I'm streaming regularly. Um, so it's not a lot. Uh, you wouldn't be making a living off it, but if you were streaming in your own time, it might pay for some kit, it might pay towards a holiday. Um, I just donate mine to charity because I stream on work time, so it doesn't feel right for me to pocket the money that people give me on stream. Um, is streaming on weekends a good idea? Absolutely. If that works for you and you're happy streaming on weekends, there's a lot of people streaming on weekends and on Friday nights. It's weird. People stream all hours. I stream in the morning. Sometimes I think, oh, no one's going to be there. And then there's hundreds of people from further east than me, like from India, like um, uh, Indian developers, they love coming on and watching the streams in the morning and you're in their time zone then. Uh, so streaming any time of the day, there's always going to be people around. So any time that suits you. Uh, last question, do people generally stick around for the whole stream or come and go? Uh, so I'd say there's a hard core amount of people that will stick for the whole stream, maybe 10, depending on like the percentage. So let's say 10% of your viewers will stay for the whole stream and the others will be transient. They'll come in, they'll drop in for a bit and leave. Um, so yeah, there's a few that will do, but there's a lot of people who dip in and out or you know, go and do something else, come back, or they're like, oh, I know all of this and I'll go watch another streamer. So it depends. So an average, you'll get an average and Twitch gives you quite a good amount of um, breakdown of um, how many views. So typically for me, let's say, I have an average about 60 viewers per stream but I'll have something like eight, 900 views. So that's eight or 900 people have dipped in to the channel, um, but they've not necessarily stayed because I'll stream over like five hours. So people have come in, but the average is 60. So it's kind of a little bit weird. Um, so yeah, right, I think that is all my questions and I'm two minutes over time. I'm really sorry, folks. Um, I just wanna say a huge thank you for coming to the session. Um, all the details are here. Reach out, hang out, go give it a go. And thank you so much. Um, and hopefully uh, I'll be back uh, actually in person at the next NDC Oslo. Um, big hearts to you all. Thank you so much.